Hello, and welcome to Getting Goosebumps, the podcast where we venture into the spine-tingling worlds of R.L. Stein. My name is Stacy. Hey, Home Slice, let's talk about Fear Street. My name is Allison. Hello, nurse. I'm Mickey. <laughs> you guys, we're here today to talk about something a little bit different. A little bit different. We're going to talk about Fear Street 1994, the Netflix movie. Yay! What did you guys uh, think? Opening opening thoughts. Uh, I think the movie was uh, Da Bomb, All That and a Bag of Chips. <laughs> okay, uh, all right. <laughs> I may have a page of 90s slang. We are very excited. I'm very excited to talk 90s, but one thing that disappointed me was how little they spoke 90s. I yeah. know. Is this movie in the 90s? I, I, I had know. to keep reminding well, myself. And the the movie kept keeps reminding yeah they very I very much was aware that these were Gen Z kids yeah <laughs> um, but the movie kept reminding me because every single song on that soundtrack was a banger oh my god yeah I w- yeah I was watching it with my uh, boyfriend and uh, he was like whoa 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 like yeah. it, the, the the okay the, like if nothing else. People who haven't seen this need to watch it for the music. Like, Netflix has the budget for those banging tunes, and yeah. man, oh man, I, like, That's want the soundtrack for like, this movie. I, I actually said while we were watching it, I was like, oh, they did not, they did not, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They didn't hold back on the, paying the big bucks for the soundtrack, because, like... Mm-hmm. It was like they put in all this money for the music and then they needed to use them all. It re- like every five oh, seconds they changed songs. Yes. And it oh, yeah, bananas. there was a montage. There was a montage where they had a new song every 10 seconds. Yes. Yeah, so when they were in school, kind of mm-hmm. showing the kids in the hallway. Yeah. I was do, like, we have, do we have a Can summary we, for this? Yeah, we, we, yeah. So I was just going to say, we've, we've kind of bounced ahead because we're all excited, but we don't have a summary like our usual for this episode or movie rather because. It's new content. So instead of that, why don't we share with you the blurb that Netflix wrote? So does anyone want to read that? I can read it. Do it. It's Do like it two up. sentences. Go for it. Here we go. <laughs> After a series of brutal slayings, a teen and her friends take on an evil force that's plagued their notorious town for centuries. Welcome to Shady Side. Yeah. Which I love that because, like, I, I obviously they're Fear Street books, so they have to take place in proximity to Fear Street, but I love just being able to see a visual of, of Shadyside. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. It's glorious. Now, there was a lot of focus on the town Shadyside, I think is an important thing. And then I mm-hmm. don't know if the actual book series, if that becomes like a thing. Maybe Stacy knows better than we do. Yeah, I was but, gonna say a lot of it is not it's not based on a particular book, but then when they get the, into like the history and stuff, that does mm-hmm. come from the series. Gotcha. That's what I figured. Um mm-hmm. uh but uh was there ever a shout out in the movie to Fear Street itself, like the actual street? Um, well, it's because the the witch, Sarah Fear. Her last name oh, it, right. it's spelled spelled a little bit differently. differently. But that's yes, where it comes go. from is the fear gotcha. family. Yeah. Gotcha. So okay. let's get into uh I, I instantly knew that this was gonna be phenomenal, even if just for nostalgia, because the opening shot of this movie is a a girl whose face we can't see, the camera's over the back of her shoulder, holding up uh, and selling a R.L. Stein book, The Wrong Number, which I remember they that. Oh, no, it's not, R. L. No. it's not an R.L. Stein book. Oh, is that a it's... Christopher Pike book? No, no, no. no. It's, it's got a different like pen name on it, I think. Oh, is that well, right? Well, but I was mad that they have the cool covers, and we don't mm-hmm. have the cool covers, and I want yeah. the cool covers. Like, where did well, they get the cool covers? Did they just reprint new books? That's not they, fair. Why didn't they resell them? Then <laughs> I want the cool covers. All right. Well, Stacy's rage aside, uh, they can't have the updated books because they would have to explain time travel. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, yes, let's go. Is this gonna? And then, well, I'll, I'll admit. Part of me was worried about watching this because I was like, oh, is this going to spoil like a bunch of the books? Because I haven't read them and I'm really enjoying like reading them for the first time. Because I I think I only read maybe one or two Fear Street books growing up and there's so many of them. But I was like, you know what? I'm not going to remember those books when we get to them or I'm not going to remember like these scenes. So that and the thing that I was figuring was like, 
uh, why I figured it was like how Stacy was saying, I was like, maybe if there's like a common thread about the town, that's mm-hmm. what this movie will entail. But yeah. they're not expecting anyone watching this to have read the Fear Street books because I think even though it takes place in 1994 and like us millennials are all like, oh, the soundtrack. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think this really is, I like, I think what they were going for was like a younger, like a teen audience. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. um, I don't think that they felt like they needed to like put references into the books yeah. because I, I think they know those books aren't really popular right now. So well, that's another thing is that I, I bet there'll be a, a, at least a little boom uh, yeah. in popularity of the series. So if they go in and they're like, "Well, here's all the endings," then they're kind of you know screwing themselves over. So uh, I'm definitely enticed. I can't wait for us to read more Fear Street books. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'm I let's. Let's go. D- does anybody, like, do you have notes for this one, Stacey? Not as far as, like, the progression of the story. No. Okay. Well, so why don't we start just talk- in the mall? Because that would have, that yeah. I, I started to a little bit, but that's too cumbersome, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, well, but yeah, we, start- we can describe how, how we kick things off. Go ahead. So we start in the Shadyside Mall. Uh, and as we say, the cashier, um, uh, she is selling a book to a, a customer. It is the last customer of the day, I guess. The mall is closing. All the lights go off because that's how a mall go- works. You know, all the lights turn off when there's people still in t- inside. Um, <laughs> we get our first epic 90s song. Is it Closer by Nine Inch Nails? Yes, no. thank you. Is it? Yeah, it okay. is, yeah. So she, by the way, looks like she's right out of Adelia's catalog. So I was instantly hooked. <laughs> uh, you know, it's late in the mall she uses the uh, phone to call uh, her friend who works at spencer gifts what's his name again miles ryan uh, ryan. ryan from spencer's ryan from spencer's he carries around a blow-up doll because haha it's <laughs> real funny um and they're just in the mall and it's creepy and you know she's a little spooked because it's dark i guess i don't know um and uh ryan comes over and he's like oh i gotta go do this and then i'll drive you home and Ryan murders everyone. Yeah, you don't have to like no play out don't every get beat. specific. Yeah, but it's yeah, like yeah. so it it's well she starts getting chased by a skull person, but before that happens, he's yes, like, it was hey, very wait. scream. Yes, it was very scream. It's it okay, but, he hears, but you he guys hears a voice. the <laughs> the costume in this segment of the movie I need to mm-hmm. send to you because this is an animatronic from spirit halloween <gasps> and that's all i could think about uh, his name is little skelly bones and i've always wanted him and he uh, sings a little song and oh, ryan so is dressed cute. identical to little yeah skelly he's bones. just a, he's just a grown-up version he's just taller yeah but yeah that's the mask yep oh that's, that's so funny. actually very cute i mean I love he's him. really he cute. A little song about mm-hmm. uh, oh, to, about so killing people. It's great. Yeah. So to yes. describe it for the, it's one of those animatronics that sits on like a little swing. So you hang it from a tree and it swings itself. He's like a little kid skeleton. It's very cute. Well, he's like a little kid inside of like a uh, clothing with skeleton decal on them, which I'm assuming they just did to hide like you know the animatronic stuff. But maybe we can pretend it's like a creepy child in there. Oh. See, I like the idea that he's a skeleton and he's wearing skeleton pajamas. Okay, so it's double skeleton. I get you, I get you. Um, yeah, yeah, but I love exactly. the name Lil Skelly Bones and I really kind of <laughs> want him now. But I so I couldn't, a... I couldn't take the movie seriously because I was like, oh, this is this is Lil Skelly. Lil Skelly well, Bones. It was, it was Until he was like... slaughtering people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but like even then kind of, it was very like over the top and screamish. Like the movie yeah. scream, not like... Oh yeah, Chris word. immediately was like, is this scream for children? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, yes, scream for teens, even though scream was for teens. But um But, but, yeah, like, but even like, younger, even younger. Like Scream, yeah. I get we were, you know, I think we were in we were in middle school when it came out. And yeah, I would say even older teens, but like this was more like ten a uh, ten, twelve. Aimed at that would be my. Oh, guess. I think this know. is aimed at ten year olds. I don't yeah. know. About that. Oh, I think so. Aimed at teenagers, just because of the no. not because of the con- like the dialogue or like the no. rest of the movie or the plot, but just because the blood. it's like it's, it's preteen. It's no, really it's violent. Pre-teen. No, no, it's What's preteen. It has Stacey. to be. Stacey, no. I don't. Stacey. I don't know if you have the same. This was so as the basic. average person to handle <laughs> no. violence. This is, this is aimed until, at teens. Until Stacey. we got to the until we got to the bread cutter, everything was <laughs> very like 
like that what was the little boy the little brother like mm-hmm. yeah he's definitely a preteen that's what i would think he's, of as yes, a, he's a child yeah but he, no he's in high school too he's not a preteen like, he's just got oh, a baby oh, oh. oh yeah he's in the he goes to the same school as them he's in high okay. school too Oh right, right. Okay, okay. I was I I, I got confused with the babysitter. But anyway, kids. there's okay. a slaughtering at the mall. Yeah, there's uh, this. The, the, the bookstore it's... girl does not get away, which I was no. like, oh, because I, I thought she was, was going to be going, like, yeah. yeah, our protagonist or something. They can't oh, afford like, her. She's the girl from Stranger Things. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. Yeah. so Sheriff Goody or whatever his name is, he is the one who, uh, uh, you know, comes up and and shoots the killer like directly in the head. The mask comes off. It's Ryan. Obviously, we talked about this. It's Ryan. So Ryan has been killing like everyone in the mall, attacking. Um, I gotta say, my favorite part though, uh, before the slaughter was when, um. Oh God! Why am I so bad at remembering her name? I need to have the wiki open if I'm going to be doing the this. girl. The, yeah, uh, it's Heather, Heather, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to um, remember anybody's name. I know. Well, it's just yeah. Hang on, it's her friend Ryan, and and she's like, oh, so the my favorite part of that opening like murder scene is when Ryan first comes over to stab her. He tries to stab her in the gut, and she uses an R.L. Stein book, but it's under a different name in the book. She uses an R.L. Stein Fear Street book to block the knife. Like, she doesn't do it knowingly. She does it accidentally. But I laughed out loud at that because, I don't know, I just thought it was a, a very nice touch. Um, so the chase scene, murder, you know, and then we have the opening credits. Which mm-hmm. are... I love the opening credits. I was, like, pausing them to read them. Oh, because it was a montage of, like, it, newspapers mm-hmm. and stuff. It was a montage of, like, all these murderers in uh shady side uh that have happened over the last like you know 200 years is it no 400 years like it's like neon colors the music was like bumping like you see all these like kids and like yearbook pictures with their eyes crossed out like just i don't know it was it was very enjoyable uh and, and that's instantly... after the the opening credits happened after i really liked that they set up the whole they like acknowledge that shady side is the way it is because we've yes. talked a number of times in the books about how they're just like oh yeah fair street where everyone dies and yeah. then they carry on but here it's actually like a stigma that yeah. everyone dies and they have this war with the competing town because it's sunnyvale and it's yes. happy and mm-hmm. this is shady side and it's awful and then that's when they do the opening credits that show yes. up in newspapers and you're like mm-hmm. oh I just love that they acknowledged it. When mm-hmm. they mentioned the neighboring town, their rivals uh, being Sunnyvale, for a split second, I thought, <laughs> I was like, is this going to be a Buffy crossover? I don't <laughs> know. I was surprised. Sunnydale, I think, is the yeah, name yeah, of the yeah, town yeah. in Buffy. Yep. But um, also, that wouldn't make sense because eventually in Buffy, all the shitty things are happening yeah, in her town. Sunnydale so. is not the best place to live, <laughs> is no. Hellgate. <laughs> well, once the Hellmouth opened, but well, before yeah, that, yeah. it was fine. <laughs> Yeah, it's great, you know. But oh man, just like the imagery they used the opening credits, like I-, I was just like blown away and so excited to like get into this. And uh, yeah, so then we we start with another classic '90s song, "Only Happy When It Rains" by Garbage, yes. and we meet our actual main character, mm-hmm. who is Dina Johnson. Mm-hmm. I love where Dina, I wrote guys. the note trying to fit in every song ever. Yes, yep. because <laughs> yep. because I was like I was so excited because I love garbage and I love that song, mm-hmm. but it only played for like ten seconds <laughs> mm-hmm. well, before we zip over to someone else. Which I guess yeah. makes sense for the audience, but for me, I was like, oh, oh I no, know, I feel assaulted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, I was enjoying that, and you changed the, the channel. Yeah, let me just have the whole song. Just keep the camera on Dina, and she doesn't have to do anything. I just want to listen. So obviously, she's a moody '90s teen because only happy when it rains is playing. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. She's writing like a hate note, a love note, whatever. Like a ha- like I hate oh, you yeah. to her ex Sam, who we don't know who Sam is yet. Uh, and then we see there's like a TV uh, news that playing with Sheriff or Deputy Good, whatever. I think he's Sheriff uh, talking about catching Ryan and how there was like a slaughter at the mall and all this stuff. And you can tell that the people of Shadyside are so jaded by this because she's not even acknowledging the TV. Like, she knows and she hears it. She's like, oh, another murder. Another kid snapped. That's what they. That's how they refer to it. Another kid snapped. And then we see uh, some little computer nerd in his computer dungeon. Yeah, he's like in a chat room. What a nerd. 
<laughs> I know. I love that he is sitting at his computer with like a sheet over his head <laughs> and the monitor. So he's in like his little <laughs> fort. Like, I never tried that as a kid, but that would have been great because we only had one computer in my house. Yep, it was in the living room. It would have been nice to have some privacy. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, if I had done that in the living room, I might, the sheet would have immediately been pulled off. Yeah. He's like in his room with his own computer, which. Oh, wait, no, is it a garage the or the basement or I something? I think his room is in the basement, though. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. But, uh, but uh, he's chatting with somebody. But I don't know what he needs privacy from because the, none of these no, kids, yeah. the parents aren't around. No, I've heard parents aren't around. Multiple times and- I've been like, where are the adults? Where yeah, are the adults street. in this movie? I guess yeah. he just doesn't want his sister seeing who he's talking to. I don't know. But um, they, they do talk about their dad. He's an alcoholic, but he works like multiple jobs and their mom is dead. I don't know. Yeah, she's just gone, I think. Or dead or something. <laughs> um, but uh, they don't spend too much time on it, which was good. I was like, I don't want to spend too much time about why there are no adu- adults around in this town. Mm-hmm. I, like, I'm fine. I'm here for the ride. You don't need to, like, justify it to me. So they, they kind of mention it a few times that their dad just works and drinks and sleeps. That's it. Yeah, we meet her little brother. What is his name? Josh? Um, yes. Uh, yes, her brother Josh. And he's like a little nerd. He's chatting online with some mysterious person. He is yeah, the so, only character I like in this movie. I love Josh. Uh, I chatting, loved him too. <laughs> he's chatting with somebody who has the uh, the chat room handle of Queen of Air and Darkness. Mm. And, and what's his, his username? Silent Stalker eighty eight or something like that. Okay, I that's creepy, Josh. I think. Well, it's. I was gonna say eighty eight is when he was born, but that can't be right because it's nineteen ninety four. So he can't. He wouldn't be in high school. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, he must be like a freshman or something. Dina's probably a sophomore, or not sophomore, a junior or senior. We don't really get the specific. It's fine. And then yeah. we have the here's a song for every different character introduction. So <laughs> we immediately find out that Josh is hard, hard crushing on Dina's friend, um, uh, Kate. Yeah, Kate. Yeah, Kate. Uh, and then Kate's brother. Oh, wait, we didn't say what song played for Josh. Oh, yes. Is uh, Iron Maiden, Fear of the Dark. Yep, because of course right? he has ha- he has metal music playing for him because he's yeah he yeah he's, he's a little uh, creeper horror fan guy oh yeah like, he's he, been he knows all the lore of the conspiracy yeah. theories um I feel like he does he wear like metal t shirts during it no he has like he's got like little sweaters on <laughs> yeah he's adorable he's, got, he's like, very little, like, cute I really wanted to find only out... need to introduce Josh the end. <laughs> I know. I was, there was a certain point I watched. I was I watched this with Tom, and there was a certain point in the movie where like things were getting scary and people were getting like killed off slash injured, and mm-hmm. <laughs> it was showing Josh and Tom was like, "If anything happens to that child, I'm gonna be so." <laughs> mad. He's just like the sweetest cinnamon roll, and like yet he has the most <laughs> like horrific knowledge of like all these like ki- like deaths in Shady Side. Like he's yeah. the one. It's you very know, he, relatable if you're, like, the person mm-hmm. who's into, like, true crime or conspiracies and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It's like, he's just a sweet little bean. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's very, like, um, he has, like, the character trope of being, like, the computer where, like, he has all the yeah. information that they need. Yes. However, done really well because he clearly, it's very relatable. He's a kid. He's interested, like... It, like, fits into his, like, love of metal, his love of, like, being on the internet, like, all this stuff. It's, like, a very well-rounded character. So I don't feel like he's just there to be an information, like, data bank. Mm. But, uh, well, and he's... also we know that he has a big old crush on Kate. Yeah, he's a big old crush on Kate, Dina's friend Kate. Um, Simon he and Kate are... drugs. Yeah, Simon and Kate yes. are just <laughs> friends, right? They're not brother and sister. Oh, no. They're no, just friends. No, 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 friends. Okay, for some reason, I kept thinking they're brother and sister. I know, they had a very, like, sibling rivalry yeah. kind of, you know. Yeah. Um. So, Kate and Simon are Dina and uh, Dina's friends. They, they're drug dealers. Um, <laughs> yeah, which is so funny to me because, yeah. like, I... Okay, I'm not glamorizing selling drugs, especially mm-hmm. in high school to high schoolers. But mm-hmm. I love that, like, Simon, totally a stoner. Like, you would see him from a mile away and be like... Oh, yeah. you're the drug dealer in school. But Kate is like a cheerleader and she's He's all put together. Yeah. She has she's a little like, trapper keeper. She's yeah. like her oh, hair is like that no, perfect. she she you could identify her too because you know she has pills. 
Like that's easily. true. That's yeah. true. She's, she's not, not a stoner, but you know she's got like you know the her, yeah. Her mom doesn't talk to her, but you know takes sleeping pills and she slips them out on the side. You know, but like she's like well, we find out later she doesn't need to do anything like that. She's got a connection. Yes. She does but, have a connection. Yes, it was weird. Um, yeah, I liked Kate a lot too. I, I thought she was um she wasn't like a typical like um and I don't use this word ever, but she wasn't like the uh mean girl like bitch. But like she was just like real popular, real friendly, and real good at everything, and she also sold drugs for money. Yeah. <laughs> she was clearly a good friend to Dina and Simon. Because they're desperate to get out of the town. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Now, I don't blame them. Like I yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, they're obviously taking it all, you know, like, I remember being a teen and either being, like, waffling between, like, trying to joke away sad stuff because I, I didn't know how to deal with it or, like, absorbing the sadness as, like, my own tragedy. So I understand that, like, you know, when they find out about the mall and Kate and Simon are kind of just, like, joking about it, like, it's the witch! Uh, Dean is the yeah. one that like shuts them down. She's like, guys, people died, and they're like, well, you know, yeah, people always die here. <laughs> yeah, they'll always Basically. die. You know, we're not yeah. we're not trying to be dicks, and they're not trying to be dicks. They're just trying to cope with living in a murder town. <laughs> you know, yeah, we need but to get to ramp and and yes, the catalyst for everything. Yes, yes. Okay, so yeah, so we kind of you know got a little bit of school day. Uh, and then what is there going to be like a pep rally that night or something? What happens? Uh, Football game, game against the. Uh, oh wait, no. There's a vigil. A memorial. There's a vigil before yeah. the oh, football game. Yes. Yep. With their rival slash friend town Sunnyvale. Well, because they go to the they go to Sunnyvale. Sunnyvale hosts it. Mm-hmm. Yes, they go to Sunnyvale. Sunnyvale they, hosts so they it. pile into a bus and. Yeah. Because... Oh, and Dina is in band. Also, we didn't mention oh. that. It's mandatory. Everybody. So Kate is obviously like head cheerleader. Dina's in band. Uh, does Simon? What Simon, Simon is like this? The team mascot. Oh yeah, something. he's the mascot. So everybody's going. Obviously, but he's not, dre- not he's not dressed in a costume. I just want no. to make that clear. No, he just no. has a, a green painted face. I think. Which, to be fair, would be a little bit tasteless if he showed up at a vigil in the mascot costume. So you know, makes <laughs> oh, sense. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so they're at the vigil and we see Dina giving looks to the Sunnyvale crowd and we see what we assume is Sam, a guy uh being a little handsy with another girl and Dina kind of storms off, she's crying. And then we get I the didn't big assume, reveal cuz I saw previews for this movie. <laughs> I did not see, so I assumed just cuz I was closed-minded and I shouldn't have been. <laughs> Sam was not the guy. Sam was the girl getting manhandled. Sam she is Dina's ex. Who is a cheerleader mm-hmm. for the other team. Who used to live in Shadyside. Her mom got like another job, I think. So they moved to Sunnyvale, which good for Parents Sam. Parents got divorced. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. yeah. good for Sam. Good for Sam. She got out of Sunnyvale. Like, yeah. I but understand. Then Dina broke that. up with her, which I didn't understand. Yeah. that. Uh, well, yeah. it's not I, like it's I, far. I, no, I think it was more of like Dina felt betrayed. She felt betrayed because Sam could have, I guess, stayed with her dad in yeah. Shady Side, but like yeah. they're all trying to lead Shady. Uh, I'm getting them, yeah, Shady, Shady Side, Side Sunnyvale. I'm getting mixing the names. Teenage I get, I get how, I get yeah, the, the yeah. teenage, you know, she probably didn't, she probably regretted breaking mm-hmm. up with her in retrospect. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. She was the one that Dina was writing the note to in the beginning saying, like, I hate you. I, I never want to see you again. Blah, 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 blah. And she brought that letter uh, and a uh, uh, box of stuff that belonged to mm-hmm. Sam um, to the game. And when Sam came up to her, she gave it back to her. Then they fight and all this stuff. But it's broken up when somebody in the Sunnyvale side, the, you know, goody two-shoes uh, happy town, makes a comment about the Eagleton. This? Yeah, he's just like, oh, why do we have to have another stupid vigil? Like, we have to have one every week for these, you know, these dang, losers oh, so easy looter- losers. You get murdered so easy. Ugh. <laughs> you know? So then they start fighting, and I was totally rooting for the shady side uh, people to knock the shit out of them. <laughs> uh, so then that fight starts, and Dina and Sam, you know, get pulled away, and then we see the ride home, the Shadyside side kids but they're being tailed and i'm going to detail because this is the catalyst of what well the before movie... they realize they're being tailed 
mm-hmm. they're already getting all hyped up. Yeah, because they're, Kate they're is... weird chants and stuff. Yeah. They're she chanting and, everyone up. And I, I think there's something a little bit more to these towns, obviously. Mm-hmm. But also, like, like I wasn't even involved in, like, school sports or, like, anything that required school spirit. But, like, if, if one of our rival schools had, like, messed with us, like, I totally would have fallen into that, like, mm-hmm. culty, like, we gotta get them. They, they're they coming for us. They think we're nothing. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, kids it's, get wrapped up in that really fast. Mm-hmm. And, uh... It's- it's very easy to get, you know. They're getting rowdy. Dina is and just Dina depressed leads, and laying there. <laughs> yeah, but she like leads them on the bus in like this chant about how they need to to get them and get back at them, and they're being very aggressive. And that was another instance where I was like, "Where are the adults? Is there a driver?" I know. <laughs> yeah. Are there no chaperones? Um, but yeah, they're getting very like amped up about getting up. back at the the other school. We notice. Uh, I guess Dina notices that they're being followed by a car uh that, that is jerk. full of of sunnydale people sunnyvale wearing masks wearing those skull masks aren't yeah. they yes two of them it, well it's sam and the quarterback who was handsy with her her like new boyfriend who also was the one who started the fight with peter? the siders yeah peter. peter yes yeah peter. peter uh and then like one of their other one of their friends in the back seat who's also wearing skull mask sam is not wearing a skull mask right but she's also uh, her She's very weakly protesting, like, come on, stop. Yeah. Stop. Like, come on. We, the audience, know that she's not participating. No. But Dina sees this by looking out the back door, and she's upset, and she is pissed. And everyone mm-hmm. on the bus is, like, getting all riled up and angry, and she's like, we're going to do something. Like, she gets mm-hmm. caught up in it. And this is very dangerous, which she does. <laughs> really? Yes. She opens the back door and grabs, like, the Gatorade cooler, like the, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the little thing with the little spout on it, like a kegger, basically. Like a a full, like, Gatorade, like, the thing they dump over the coach of a team. Yeah. And and it's uh, full of Gatorade. They open the back emergency door of the bus, which, again, who is driving this bus? Like, nobody. Nobody. There are no adults here. (laughs) Yeah. uh, And they throw it out onto the car. And yeah. the car swerves. Quick and... interjection. Dina yes. gets a nosebleed as she's doing this. Oh, that's true. And she does. Yeah. So we there's a theme of kids getting nosebleeds when they are getting particularly um, em- emotional, maybe worked up. I don't know. We evil? don't quite know e- evil. Well, <laughs> you know, um, we, but we see that Dina has a nosebleed and doesn't even realize. But mm-hmm. he does seem like acts a, she. She like doesn't wasn't going to throw the cooler, but she ends up throwing it. Car spins out, goes in the woods, like Mickey said, and then everyone's okay. They're a little dazed and wounded, but Sam crawls out of the car onto this really weird, mossy, uneven ground, and like you can tell there's like something underneath it, but we don't know what it is yet. Um, the bus pulls over, the cops come, the adults show up finally. Sheriff Goody is there. He's Sam like the is, only grown up in this. He's the only grown movie. up. We don't see the face of any other grown up. Yeah. Uh and except they... for his like deputy. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. And the sheriff obviously knows they're all lying to him. <laughs> oh yeah. Like... The sheriff Sheriff Goody knows some stuff's going on, and we don't yeah. quite know what's going on with Sheriff Goody yet, but mm. there's something. There's something mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Peter, I think uh he threatens, in a very, like, teenage way, he threatens Dina uh, mm-hmm. that he's going to, like, kill her. He says, you're all gonna fucking be dead. Oh, but he does it in a very creepy way where, like, mm-hmm. he hugs her mm-hmm. and then, like, basically whispers in her ear. Yeah, and then we get a close-up of that ground that Sam is crawling on and a quick shot of a bloody woman screaming. And then Oh, yeah, wait, yeah, wait. No, yeah, we didn't... Uh, I think we should explain. explain. Yeah, yeah, okay. That what, from Sam's point of view, what mm-hmm. happened was she was... Cl- crawling you know out of the car she's like crawling through this you know on the ground next to where the car was and she gets these like visions Mm -hmm. of something uh a woman screaming scary stuff we're not really sure what she's seeing yet blood red color and is her Her i don't know if this is just from the yeah her nose starts to bleed too 
So this is when this girl starts to cough up blood. And it has oh, bothered yes. me through the whole movie that this girl is coughing up blood because that's serious. <laughs> it is yeah, very serious. That they, means something just, inside of you is bleeding. It goes yeah. on for the whole movie where it's like, oh, yeah, she's coughing up blood. And it was like, why is nobody taking this more seriously? I was so mad. I was well, like, yeah. this is a big deal. <laughs> Let's take a side note to clarify because this is important later. She coughs up blood onto Simon's shirt, onto Dina's shoe, uh, mm-hmm. and... Uh, I think that's it for that, but that's just we're gonna so we're gonna we should yeah. explain what what has happened here technically. Yeah, go for I it. Think, I think we 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 can yeah. we don't have to keep it a secret. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Stacy, what happened? <laughs> what did Sam do? What did Sam so do? Sam has inadvertently uh, disturbed Sarah Fear's grave. Who's the witch but she's a witch basically and that's who we're going to be going back to in the third movie. Um, and it was her whole story that kicked off the whole fear street thing. So Mm -hmm. she has now disturbed this witch's grave. And that is the catalyst for (laughs) everything that happens in this movie, essentially. Yeah. She pissed off the wrong dead witch. Except the mall slaughtering. There's a lot of weird, I don't know how this all connects. Maybe we can talk about it a bit more, but there's some questions that I have. Yes. I don't know. Well, Same. we can. I I feel like I've got a good handle on this, so I'll I'll help you guys what, out after. Yeah. So, what triggered the mall slaughtering? So, well, right before he lost it, we saw a tiny scene of him, like uh, you know, after he said to Heather, like, "Oh, I gotta go close up, and then we'll I'll drive you home." Blah blah blah. We hear a voice, a whisper in his ear, Ryan, mm-hmm. and then there's some like wind noises to symbolize, you know, the spooky stuff. So. We are assuming that he heard the voice of Sarah Fear, and she possessed him. We don't. We don't know that yet. Okay. We don't think okay. he will. Well, do you we, think he trop trop like traipsed across her grave or something? Well, because no. all of those circumstances were different than the circumstances mm-hmm. we're seeing now in this movie. In yes, this movie, that- all the previous killers are coming back. Where yes. in all of the previous instances, someone became a killer. That's what I'm saying. Listen, Sam disturbed okay. the grave. Nobody has disturbed the grave before. Okay. Nobody swerved into the woods. Nobody has right. disturbed it. Uh, uh, Sarah Fear is pissed. She's like, how dare you touch my old bones? So like, what was the catalyst for Ryan and the, all Sarah the other Fear's people? Sarah Fear fucking evil. Just, no. just for shits and giggles? You think she just randomly chose him yes. to slaughter everybody? That's all I don't we know. know. That's all we know. We don't know yet. There's two more movies. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad that, watch. you know, we don't know for sure because I feel like I had missed something. So. Yeah. <laughs> but still, I, I'm, I don't all know. Right. I hope we figure it out. But yes, the other killers that we meet in this movie are, and, and Ryan seems to be a part of this crew, are her, like, little minions, basically. Mm-hmm. Well, um, anybody that she possesses. Uh, cause like when, here's the thing, go back to the beginning when Ryan gets shot in the head and his mask falls off, obviously he looks dead because he was just killed, but he doesn't look like himself. He has a glaze, he has glazed eyes, his like, you know, he looks, he looks t- stereotypically possessed. Imagine someone who looks possessed. He looks like that. Okay. So I don't know why Sarah Fear is doing this. Oh, I haven't met the woman. I mean, really? So I, I don't know, but I think that she just occasionally wants to fuck with this town be oh you know why because this town killed her yeah yeah no i get that she... so she's, she's cursed them for all eternity that's all we know all right i, well, I mean maybe we'll find okay. out more but right that's now that's fair. what we know you yeah. so maybe the same about thing, it the Listen. same thing <laughs> came over ryan that like you know happened like when dina's getting a nosebleed maybe like, but maybe maybe she was beginning to mm-hmm you know, sort of get that little evil in her. But maybe some people are more susceptible to it. Maybe, 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 uh, you know, Dina wasn't a good candidate because suddenly, you know, maybe she was about to take control of Dina, like, and then somebody walked all over her grave and she's like, no, 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 no. This is what right. I do. I need to, this is what I, this is what I need to focus on right now. Right. So yeah. Cause that's, I, that's... I, I was wondering if there was something, uh, more than just like teen emotions going on with Dina because mm-hmm. she knew Sam was in that car and mm-hmm. decided to open the door and like go to throw out the thing. That would that would make mm-hmm. sense. That would make sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm I'm for this theory. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, 
Anyway, okay, but so, so yeah, so uh, basically we kind of we're talking about what happens in the movie and that is all these previous killers come back. Yes. And that Dead is people. what we're dealing with essentially. Yeah. And I think some of the killers that they showed were amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I was really impressed. Yeah. Yep. There's so there who who do we have? There's a uh the guy, guy with, with the a- yeah bag on his head and yeah he was uh, the coolest one axe. for me i think yes he's your classic 80s slasher villain <laughs> yes and who apparently we find out killed a bunch of people at a summer camp camp nightwing which we we know about hint, camp hint, nightwing and tint that's going mm-hmm. to be part two and then there's this woman who simon first finds because he sees a hot lady who seems yeah. to need help. <laughs> Ruby Lane. That's Ruby Lane from the 50s. Yep. Yes. And she sings a little song. Skeleton Kid comes back. So Ryan comes back. Yeah. Yes. So are, are, there's another one. Is it three? Or is there more? I think it's there's... just I, it's just Ryan. Skull fa- or Ryan is Skull Mask. Um, it's just Ryan, Ruby Lane, and the Axe Guy. But okay. I don't know that we got a name for Axe Guy. So just Camp Nightwing Killer. Maybe this is another twist and well, he's not called, a yeah. man, he's a lady. We see, we see more. Camp like killer. there's also the Milkman Killer. Oh yes, yes. there are references Dumpy to killer. Yes, there's the other child Parker. killer. Parker, yeah. Yes, the Billy. little boy with the blue boy mask. <laughs> I don't yes. like Billy. I don't like Billy. Billy's a bad name. Oh, the grifter from the early 1900s had mm-hmm. on just like a grifter who had on this really intense metal pointy mask. Yes. Was there one? So is it like every twenty years, or because there was there was there ish. was um ish? Ruby I Lane, think ish. Yeah. Ruby Lane in the fifties, Camp Killer in the seventies, and now Ryan in the nineties. Uh, Ruby Lane was the sixties. The Milkman oh, was 60s. the fifties, though. Oh, and so every ten was years. Thirties. Well, Billy Barker was twenties, but Grifter okay, was so nineteen hundred. Yeah, Maybe so it's, it's not approximately happening. ten years, ten to twenty years, mm-hmm. every once in a while. So yeah, so yeah, maybe that's just the thing with the witch is like maybe. her spirit still just requires uh, mm-hmm. sacrifice. So she'll pick somebody to be her little minion and yeah. kill as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Maybe we'll in the next two movies we'll get more clarity on the rules. Of, yeah, uh, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Um, um, so you guys, there was a portion of this movie where things got super slow. Do you guys feel the same? Um, like it dipped out for me for oh a good when portion. when they were like setting up to try to make a trap. Was yeah, it but or- it didn't pick up again until like kids were dying. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I, there was I feel that babysitting stuff going on. There was the fir- well, these killers come back, but it's so yeah. We have like Kate's babysitting kids, so it's just like like slices. Uh, like <laughs> wait, wait, can we talk? About, can we talk about Kate babysitting these kids? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's, she's having them split up and bag pills for her. <laughs> yeah, don't eat them though. They'll don't eat them. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and so yeah, funny. so. So they see somebody outside their house and Kate gets freaked and she sent she's they see a skull person. They think yeah. it's Peter. Um of so they, she sends the kids home because she's like, I'm not gonna have them be scared with this bullshit. No, she doesn't send them home. She gives them to another neighbor. Oh, another neighbor. Because she's who... at their house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, uh, and yeah. then Dina also sees a skull face by her house. Um, and then oh, so it goes to Dina's house first. Dina gets freaked out. Um, and then it goes to the Kate's house and actually breaks in and starts rifling through like Kate and Simon's like laundry. No, 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 oh. no, no. This is still at the house. I think that she babysits at. Yeah, and so it's not her house. This no. is, a, but it be and the we, reason we know that they chose this house is just because they're looking for Kate and Simon. Yeah. Or and does Kate have blood on her? Oh, it's mm, Simon. That well, shirt. He's still wearing the bloody shirt. Right. Well, so yeah, it's well, chasing so- that smell. So, yes, we need to clarify when I earlier mentioned there was blood on Dina's shoe and there's blood on Simon's shirt. Of so there's Sam's none blood. on Kate at this point. Not that we know of because Kate wasn't near okay. Sam at all. Right, right, right. So right. these killers are being Kate? brought back. Oh, the drug the girl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Two wildly different names. Um, <laughs> so these killers are being brought back from the dead. 
uh, and are hunting the smell of Sam's blood. Yes. Now, Dina never because, really doesn't realize this, but that's what's because happening. Because Sam was the one who bled all over the witch's grave. Yeah, touched her, touched her <laughs> ding-dang bones and woke her up. Like, how dare she? So they don't, she they touched don't her know. bones? And why is her grave so, like... Shallow? Shallow. I know, just, she's just, like, under some moss. After 400 years? Yeah. 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 Well, I anyway. don't think they bothered to bury her. I think they threw her in the woods. I guess we'll find out. Oh, originally? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we will find out in probably 1666. Yeah. I'm um, guessing. We might also find out in the next movie, because they're going to give us, I think, more information. Anyway, so Sam is in the hospital in Shadyside for some reason. I guess it was the closest. She's in a hospital. It doesn't really matter. It has to be shady side. It doesn't Um, matter. She's in a hospital. She's in a hospital. And um, Dina goes to visit her. I don't know. Just to see her and all that stuff. Uh, And then Peter shows up. Oh, Dina goes to accuse her. She's like, listen, your fucking boyfriend is outside my house in a skull mask. Mm, Tell him to knock it off. And she's like, Peter's been here with me the whole time. And then Peter comes up and Dina's like, I'm not buying it. This is stupid. You like blah, blah, blah. You said you're going to kill us. It's just so blah, blah, blah. I know you have a skull mask. Then Peter gets stabbed in the gut from behind. Right. Mm-hmm. Thank God. Yep. <laughs> yeah. A little. Su- I was surprised every time there was like such blatant, um, because I was assuming this was for, you know, teens or young teens. Not for preteen safety. It's not that I was surprised murders were happening. It was just like they were filmed very graphically. Very graphic. But I was here for it. it No, 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 not Not until we got to the bread slicer. Could it have been? By the time we got to the end, yes, like the bread slicer and stuff. Yes. Before then, absolutely not. He gets stabbed through his body. (laughs) Stacey, you're so deadened to violence. (laughs) (laughs) Like, how could that have been filmed more graphically? I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't even Listen, remember. I'm not it saying happening. it's the most crazy types of murders. Stacey. They are just like stabbings and stuff. But it's still, rated just R. <laughs> well, because the girl goes through the bread slicer. Yeah, but it's rated R. You think R? that's the only reason? Also, no, because Truly, there's also sexual scenes. Yeah, and the swears. Honestly, I think yes. the R is mostly for that stuff because persons rated R restriction means stuff. people under sixteen not admitted unless accompanied by parent or guardian. That I guarantee you, clearly... it's for the sexual it's... scenes, the language, that's... and maybe the the violence in that scene at the grocery that's, store. That's fine. But no, it's not. Oh it's not. If they took out the, if, if, the if they took out the bread slicer scene, it would still be re- and all the language and all the and sex. The sex. Stuff. It, it would no. still be rated R. I think yes. it'd be PG thirteen. <laughs> I do. Well, maybe you might be right. Stacey, you might be Stacey, right. You might be right. Stacey, PG thirteen still means not tailored to preteen. <laughs> tailored but to teen. The rating is not necessarily who they're targeting the movie for. That's just because it's a third party. Yeah. It's the rating system, and it's I don't always agree with the rating system how it works. Right. But None of us do, it's I a think. whole separate thing. So what they decide isn't necessarily who they have what? in mind for the movie yes. when they're creating you think it. That Hellraiser was made for kindergartners. No, what does this have to do with Hellraiser? <laughs> I'm just thinking of a violent, horrific movie. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm disagreeing. I'm this saying is this so is clearly marketed to teens, young, <laughs> young kids. Don't give a poop about the soundtrack. Like uh, anyway, anyway, we're getting off track. <laughs> We're getting all heated up. The, the Let's bread talk slicer about- scene was great. I yeah, drew a picture of a loaf of bread covered in blood. That's how excited I was. So, in my so notes. Here's, here's the only, not the only thing, but here's one of the things that confused me in the movie. So they're all in the hospital. They're all visiting Sam. Peter just got ganked, got gutted. They're <laughs> running around. They're trying to find somebody to help them. Um, what is the nurse's name? Nurse Betty. I love. Oh, we meet Nurse, nurse Betty. Betty. I love Nurse Betty. This is Betty? this is Kate's connection. Ugh. This is how she's getting all the drugs to sell all the oh, children. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm, is yeah. there's just a nurse that works at this hospital whose name is Eddie, but he goes by Nurse Betty. And he's he's clearly transgender. He presents as oh. female. What? But oh no! Has... I think that it's just no, a no, joke no. name. I I didn't get the impression. That this was a person presenting as female. He's wearing like female color coded scrubs and full makeup. What? What? I do not think this person had makeup on. Well, I mean, let me, movie let me makeup, look back. But not let like. Me look back. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember this. I mean, you could be right, but you could be right. But I just got the impression that like he thought it was this. funny to 
go by Nurse Betty. Yeah, he's got blush, lipstick, and mascara on. Well, like I don't regular know. movie makeup? Like, no, I mean, not like, not like um, drag makeup and not like movie subtle makeup. Like, you can tell he's got makeup on. Like, he looks dolled up. I mean, that's when he gets murdered. Anyway, Nurse Wait. Betty gets killed, and it's very sad, because I love Nurse Betty. Oh, I didn't, because this is an adult who's giving drugs to children <laughs> to sell in schools. Yeah, but somebody's being murdered. It's a little... So? <laughs> uh, oh, I'm just... I don't think he's wearing makeup. I think he, that's just how he's supposed to look. I don't yeah, think I he's wearing makeup, Allison. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Kate, Kate I don't also think... refers to Nurse Betty as she. I, I believe that she's wearing, you know, light makeup. Not, but clearly some mascara, lipstick, maybe not blush. But, I don't know. I guess it's not that important. I'm just confused. I, I, I don't yeah. think. It... Any, at any rate, Nurse Betty gets murdered. People get murdered. So yeah. the, okay, so the, yeah, this is the thing that confused me, is that later on in the movie... It is, it is uh, explained that these minions of Seraphir only want to kill um, Sam. So the only yes. reason they're going after the other kids is because they have Sam's blood on them. But and... also, I think it is established what you're about to say is like, they these other people didn't have Sam's blood on them, necessarily. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, They so... will also just kill anyone who's in the way. No, that's my point. They don't. Later they on don't. in the movie, they specifically dodge around the kids yeah. to get into the room where Sam they is. They do, that's or why, do the kids yes. step back? No. No, they, they move around them. Yeah. Until that's they have the blood confused. on them. They, they specifically ignore them. The yeah. scene where they're going into the bathroom for the trap later, um, they specifically dodge around the kids. That's what confused me. That's really yeah. the only part of the movie that I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't track. Yeah. Why would they bother killing Betty and the, the, the receptionist at the front desk when they could have just like walked by? They were already in the house. I don't know. So it is, again, it's a small thing. It's not a huge deal. It just is one of the things that confused me. They're running for their lives. They steal an ambulance. They flee. Sam's with them. And then we yeah. see some scenes of like Sheriff Goody, who is like looking through old cases and whatnot. Yeah. So I'm super excited. And this is when we actually, um, they're at the, they go to the Sam and Dina and Josh and Kate. They all go to the, um, police station. This is when uh, Simon gets attacked by Ruby Lane, who's going to kill him, but he's wearing the shirt with Sam's blood right. on it. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Yep. Yep. Well, Dina tries to talk to uh, Sh uh, Sheriff Goody, mm -hmm. and he thinks that she's just another person pranking because apparently he gets a lot of those calls. Well, so uh, uh, the name, uh, they are. That oh. family is from way back as well. Yes, I didn't even think of the name Goody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because of with the relation to Salem. Yeah. They oh, were, wow. They, so they're descendants of, I don't remember the specifics. I don't well, know if they talk about it in the movie, but they're related. They're, they'll come back, I think. Yeah, I, that's what I figured that all the families that are still in this town, probably most of them date back to mm -hmm. when we go back in time to the original witch incident. Well, we, um, we can read a... those books if you guys want to. We don't have to wait. Because the, the story that explains this is a set of three. It's a trilogy. And it's removed oh. from the, the other ones. Oh. So we can read that anytime. Yeah. Ooh, I would like to, com I would like to not necessarily um, compare, but get some more information. But yeah. we do find out that um, the original like minister, I can't remember what his religious title is priest pastor pastor there we go uh who condemned sarah fear and you know essentially had her killed um he also killed other people like i don't know yeah but he was the first in the long line of people in shady side just becoming killers right he yeah like so to be to clarify what you're saying it's not that well, maybe it is, but the implication is not that just that he held a bunch of trials and found a bunch of people to be witches and or whatever. It's that he actually was a murderer. Like mm -hmm. he was murdering people. So he yes. was the first like murderer in town. Okay, so Stacy kind of already knows or has somewhere in, in her mind the backstory of this. A little mm -hmm. bit. It a is little big. bit. <laughs> yes. Yes. And who knows if they're gonna stay completely true to it or not. Right. Yep. But um, whenever there's like a, you know, video game or a movie or anything about like witch trials, 
you know what? I'm always rooting for the witch. <laughs> yeah, I am too. I am. I am too. I wonder like, if it's going to turn out that she was not evil. And when she died, she made like a pact with the devil or I don't know. Or something. Or like know. it was just so horrific what happened to her that it be, you the know, she cursed the spirit of vengeance. Town. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I'm excited to get to that movie too. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that I'm on 100% inside the witches, even if they actually are <laughs> evil. Yep, yep, absolutely. Great, love uh, it. So let's continue. Um, <laughs> they all start getting hunted, and they they talk about how uh, they figure out, I think, they need to take the clothes off that have the blood on them, because they realize that it's like Sam's blood, and they mm-hmm. realize that Sam disturbed the grave. So they, they try to do what, you know, I would also do, I guess, in this very crazy scenario is you disturb the grave man you gotta go and undisturb yeah, it and it's our boy our boy josh who explains to them you guys mm-hmm. this is what's happening yep. yeah and he he also identifies correctly the killers like he's like oh that's ruby lane was oh yeah singing, he knows was all she singing the song she was singing that when she cu- killed her boyfriend and the people at the party blah blah, blah. uh yeah. and then we go back to the scene of the car accident and there's just like a skull on the ground nobody noticed it before but it's just like there <laughs> So they yeah, go there's back. just some loose bones. <laughs> yep. They go back and they find Sarah's corpse, well, her bones, but they mm-hmm. also find the chains that she was bound in. So right. not only was this woman hung or burned, I think, uh, I think hung, because they typically only burned witches in England, but, you know, anything goes in a movie. Um, yeah. But um, she was also manacled. She was chained up. Yeah. And they all get a good handful of that. What? So. Well, they all like are touching the chains and moving the bones. Oh, gotcha. So I don't know. Oh. But so to like rebury her, they like just put more moss on her. I don't really. Well, get they wrap it. her bones in a Letterman jacket. Yep. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes. And then they just kind of place it there, and then put some more like you know leaves and stuff over it. And they're like, "Are you buried now?" <laughs> I mean, they do say sorry. Like, you yes. Know. Yeah. Like, but uh, that's unfortunately not how this works. <laughs> mm-hmm. Unfortunately for them. You can't just go put some moss on some bones and say sorry <laughs> and have everything be okay. And if that's not an allegory for real life, then I don't know what is. I wish that was the way the world worked. Yeah, just put some dirt on it. It'll be better. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the awkward, we, uh, coming up is the awkward bathroom scenes that I didn't yes. like too much. I didn't oh. either. Well, wait, um, while they're in the woods, by the way, they get start getting chased by the axe man. Uh Sam's nose starts bleeding again, and she starts having more visions of Sarah. We think mm. is Sarah Fear screaming mm-hmm. and covered in blood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sheriff mm-hmm. Goody discovers the hospital, and then they go to the school to hide out, and they change their clothes because they realize the blood. Oh, is Oh, no this gold. was kind of fun. They got schools from uh, clothes from the Lost and Found box, so they're yeah. all wearing like silly clothes. Yep, that was fun. I liked yeah. that little touch. Yeah, um, then we have like some "I'm about to die, let's kiss" scenes, which you know. They're teenagers. Hormones are going crazy. They do. They do some kissing. Sam and Dina. <gasps> Sam and Dean. Sam and Dina. <laughs> oh man! Oh, it's supernatural. No. Oh no! Oh dear. <laughs> anyway. Oh gosh. Um, but they're not siblings. So, no. um, you know, Sam and Dina hook up. Uh, Josh and Kate go to quote barely first base <laughs> yeah so, so which is funny no so hang on this also bothered me a little bit and it's not what? none of them bothered me except for simon so like <laughs> well so i was gonna D- get so, so dina and sam go into like a science lab and and yeah. dina helps clean up some of like sam has a cut in her back um so they obviously have a pre like they yeah. were a relationship at one point. So they, they start talking and they, you know, they like, I, I, I still love you, blah, blah, blah. They kiss, you know, they kiss a bit. Then we go to the scene where well, they do Kate, more than kiss. Yeah. They do okay, a lot well, more than okay, kiss. Listen. But so, um, Kate goes into the girl's room, the girl's bathroom changed, but she's like freaked out. She's like, I don't want to be alone. Can you come with me, Josh? So Josh goes with her into the room. He's not like in, in, in the stall with her yet, but he's like in the bathroom and she's changing. Um, and she says she needs help, I think, cleaning blood off of... Well, check. He ne- she needs him to check her to make okay, sure yeah. that she doesn't still have any blood on her. So then uh, I think Josh says something about, like, oh, I've never kissed anybody and I'm going to die. So Kate, I think, either really likes him, which she might because he's a kid, he's adorable. Or she just feels bad for him, which is also Yeah, okay. I think she and, just kind of felt bad for yeah, him. Yeah, and so they And was like, eh, I might as well kiss someone before I yeah. might die, too. Yeah, they kiss, you know, it's very, it's very sweet. And then Simon is in the boys' bathroom, just like fucking, I think he's stoned still, I don't know. But he's just like having a time of his life. Him. 
He's like washing his armpits and stuff in the sink. He's having a, a he's having a hand towel bath and all that stuff. So then everybody comes out and like Sam and no Dina wait clearly... wait there's romantic music playing. Okay, we know yes. what Simon is about to do. Yeah, Simon reaches <laughs> he towards his underpants. hand in his pants. Yeah, he's under he's in his underpants. Okay, and he's having a great time, and I'm happy a for great him. Time. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> but so everybody comes out of their respective like areas. And, like, Sam and Dina are, like, closer and, like, holding hands. Clearly, they've at least made out. Uh, uh, Josh and Kate come out of the bathroom. And, you know, they're, like, a little awkward. So, clearly, they, like, you Mm -hmm. know, kissed or something. And Simon comes out of the boys' room just, like, yeah, I just jerked off. Like, what the (laughs) fuck? The hell? Like, well, no, he doesn't say it like that. He says, did uh, you all go to Pound Town? Did you all go to Pound Town? Yeah, me too. (laughs) With myself. Like, oh my god. Like, I, like, that- I appreciate him lightening the mood. I guess, but it also took me out of the movie a little bit. No, the whole thing was weird. Yeah, no, I- I, Okay, so here's what- None of, like, what you're saying bothered me. Stacey disliked it. No, I I didn't enjoy it. No, here's- Here's- Here's my problem. The the best shot one and the most like effectively romantic one was obviously Sam and Dina, because they're supposed to be, like, an established couple. But- Two seconds into it, I couldn't even enjoy whatever romance I was supposed to be feeling because I was like, I'm watching teenagers feel each other up. I don't like yeah, this. this feels yeah, I was weird. I was uncomfortable about that too. If yeah. I like, was a teenager, I'm... I'd probably be fine with it. But oh, yeah, I'm in my thirties like, yeah. and I felt like a pervert. <laughs> I did feel like a pervert. Yeah. I think maybe that's why I'm so exactly. uncomfortable about Simon, because it's just like I don't want to hear about a young boy masturbating. I really don't. It's natural, Allison. I don't need that. I don't want my data involved that. I get out of here. I don't want it. Oh, okay. So anyway, that was all the romance of the movie. Romantic scenes, I guess. Didn't um, need it. Thanks. No, did not. Did not. I, I think maybe the teen audience appreciated yeah. that more, probably. Yeah. For, they probably for us, we're hysterical. like, ooh. ooh. <laughs> like, like, ooh, I can see... I'm gonna look at my phone. Oh, I don't. I shouldn't look at this. I don't. (laughs) I can't. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm happy that Sam and Dina are like you know close again because they clearly love each other. And like I think Josh is an adorable little cutie pie, and I'm glad he got his first kiss. But Simon, come on, just come on, get get out of here. Stop it. I no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. (laughs) Like um. So then they set a trap in the bathroom. They're like, okay, oh, oh, I'm I have the movie on the background just to keep me on track. And it's the scene where they cut Sam's hand open to get the blood. So they put some of Sam's blood in a big old bucket full of water so that there's now way, way too bloody water for the small amount of blood they put yeah. in there. And they leave pads of blood to this bathroom where there's a shit this ton of smart. chemicals. Yeah, it was quite this smart. Mm-hmm. So they hide a dummy uh, in the stall. Sam's also in the stall, but she's going to escape to the vent that's above the bathroom, uh, above the stall. And they lead all these blood trails to the bathroom and like Sam is ready to go. She's like, ready to run. And then all these beasties come into the school. And this is the part where they're, like, following the blood. And then they yeah. completely sidestep That's Adina okay. and Josh and all that stuff. Because there's one scene where Josh, I think, is, like, too stunned to move. And mm-hmm. they just run right by him. Like, they ignore mm-hmm. him. Even well, they Josh slowly, is, like, menacingly walk. They don't run. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got, we've got Camp Killer, uh, Ruby Lane, and... Um, uh, j- b- b- Ryan, Ma- Ryan, Ryan Skull. Who I keep wanting Skull. to call Miles, and I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, he like Miles. I, I don't know why, <laughs> but yeah, such a give- random name. <laughs> it's really an interesting scene too, because all these like evil people, like Ruby Lane and Ryan, come like walking over, and they like kind of give looks to the kids as they walk by, and then you've got a uh, camp killer who's like sprinting <laughs> down the hallway, and he like busts in the door. Uh, and he gets in, he like, he acts as the mannequin that they were using for the Sam decoy, just as Sam gets out of the bathroom through the vent, and then they light it on fire, and they blow the place to hell. Blow the bathroom. They blow the bathroom to hell. Yeah. Wait, what, what, what did they use as explosives? I don't recall. Stuff from the science lab? It looks like big bottles full of, I don't know, formaldehyde? Yeah, it must be from the science lab. What would they have in science classroom that they have gallons and gallons of it? Alcohol? Uh, maybe formaldehyde, which I don't know how flammable formaldehyde is. I don't either. The stuff they light the burners with. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, gas maybe. Yeah, to so, like so they've, like the so they've got burners. like plastic jugs of gas. It doesn't, it doesn't well, they might have filled the room with gas. Uh, 
They didn't it show was, that, but like I'm just. They did. It was a liquid that splashed out. So anyway, it doesn't matter oh, though. Right. It's yeah. It, we're getting off track. I'm it's the detail. '90s. There were plenty of flammable things in a high school. <laughs> yeah, everything. Yeah. So they go to the bathroom and they see that these killers have been like decimated. They're pieces. They're like thrown mm. about the bathroom. They're like However, goo. So the goo starts to like reform, which like maybe they should have considered that like these are the actual people who have been dead for decades. And they're able to walk around that maybe mm-hmm. just killing their bodies was not going to do the trick. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they gave it their best shot. <laughs> they did. I mean, for being, you know, kids that are in a panic, they gave it a pretty darn good shot. I, I think that was a great yeah, idea. That's true. Um, and it was a good plan, to be honest. It's a good plan. So that doesn't work. They start fleeing and Kate starts. It, and again, Kate, I like Kate. And she's not doing this in like a like, I want to live. So you have to die situation. But she's like, listen, there's only a solution to this. Like, there's only one solution. We are going to die because they're going to kill Sam no matter what. Like, yeah. we can't avoid this. So Sam needs to die. I'm sorry, but that's how it is. And like, I, she's right. She's right. They like, are obviously- only going after Sam. Yeah. And obviously, you know, Dina can't accept that and it's it's a horrific thing, but they won't stop hunting them until Sam is dead. So, right. you know. I did um, finally make a note that says I like the sassy girl who I'm assuming is Kate. Kate. Yeah. <laughs> then it immediately uh following was the bread slicer scene. And I was yeah. like, what yeah. the hell? Yeah. So you just so, when you start to like her. <laughs> um but so So they go Sam, to the supermarket. Well, uh, Sam, first off, Sam agrees with Kate. She's like, look, I agree. I yeah. agree. Like, you're right. I, 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 this is not fair. They're only after me. I'm going to save you guys. So she goes out and she waits. Um, but what Hold happens on, in the hallway? hallway? Hold on. When do we what? talk about uh, C, C Beamer, C Brennan, C the survivor? Oh, the, the other survivor? Yeah. When does know. that When did that? Later. That's later. That's later. When they- that's when they figure out that they Oh, while shot. Sam's in the hallway. While Sam's in the is hallway. Is it? How? Yes, how? They're, because they're reading the, the article. Oh, yeah. okay. Because I'm like, they don't have cell phones or internet, so how did they figure this out? Josh carries around the articles. So he carries gotcha. on these articles and they're reading gotcha. them. And then he looks down and he's like, is there a way to save her? Uh, and he's like, oh, there was a survivor for Cat Nightwing. There was a survivor. They can survive this. So mm-hmm. Sam is just like that survivor, like they, they can save her. So they pull Sam out of the hallway and they go to make their final stand at the supermarket. But at some point, they realize that she actually died. When did that happen? Later? So that's later. Um, they, okay. I think they, they get out. Do they call from the grocery store? They call from the school. They call her number. Again, I feel like I'm only rethinking all these things because I'm like, there's no cell phones. Where well, because there there are phones at the school that have landlines. Oh, that's right. Out. And they find a they're in the office, the like head office of the school. So there's a phone book. Yeah, there's a phone book because everywhere has phone books back then. Um, so they just look her up because she obviously lived in, maybe still lives in Shady Side. They then we see the note of Goody leaving that it's happening again. Um, they're like, okay, so uh, find out while they're like. Uh, keeping the axe guy out the door they're like find out how she's lived and I think it was Josh who was like she died and they're like what you said she lived she's like no well she died first she was dead and they revived her so then Kate and Simon come in and they're like okay we're gonna drug you so you essentially die and then we're gonna bring you back with EpiPen adrenaline yeah okay which so it pays to have a have a drug dealer friend yeah <laughs> yeah I mean, honestly, that's the lesson of this yeah, movie. Yeah, because they mix up the cocktail. Like, yep. what she figures out favorite. exactly what kind of cocktail, like, well, and in stages yeah. and phases. Like, first you're going to take these pills. Then, then you're going to do this. Yeah. It's going to make you, it's going to pass you out. And then you're going to take this. You have to take this here or you won't come back. And then we're yeah. going to shoot you with that, blah, blah, blah. So, um... So they have this like tear set. They all paint themselves with Sam's blood. Sam's losing Wait, a lot wait, wait. I do want to mention, I had started to say it, that they go to the grocery store and Simon works at this grocery store. Yes. And we see He's... that he has been the employee of the month like Every 12 month. months in a row. Yep. Oh my God, I missed that. That's hilarious. Yep. Oh, I laughed so hard because they I just show too. the wall for a second and it's just and his Sam. picture over and over again. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> also, can we just appreciate? I I I love that Simon's outfit from the Lost and Found is a yes. gigantic cable knit button sweater, clearly belonging to a much 
larger, busty woman. Uh, well, it was then, the '90s. Like, it might have just been oversized. Oversized, yeah. Um, but it's but it's a bright purple him. sweater. Yeah, yeah, with and no shirt these, like, underneath. Like these baggy orange, like sweatpants. I don't even know what kind of pants he's wearing, but like they're everything is oversized. And I do really yeah. like Simon. I just didn't need to know about him going to pound town himself. Anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, they're in the grocery store. And they basically are like, okay, we're going to keep the killers busy while Sam takes these pills and kills herself. And then we're going to revive her. Mm. While Dina Un- has to administer the pills because yeah. she's going to yeah. be so out of it after the first round. Yep. that. So they get through the Which first. Is disturbing. <laughs> yeah, they, they get through round one and round two of the pills. Unfortunately, the, um, the axe guy, I think it is, runs through them and... Either they get up and flee, or but something happens, and the third pills get knocked out. So now Sam is, like, in danger, but, like, she's not dying fast enough. So everybody is currently occupied with a killer. So Dina, Sam is like, you need to kill me right now. I need to die faster. And Dina drowns her in the lobster tank. Hey, you're not, you just skipped over kids dying. Well... Yeah, you skip the bread slicer scene. You skipped, and like, Stacey's my been waiting for this. Leading up to this scene. Yes. Okay, this well, is Stacey's favorite this, moment. <laughs> my my perception was all this was happening happening concurrently as she's trying to drown her. So go ahead and tell us about yeah, the bread uh, slicer scene, Stacey. That, There's yeah, a lot going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a bread slicer, and it's like a, like a conveyor belt, I guess, that you push through, and then the the slices. I've never seen one like this, so I don't yeah. know. And yeah. also, not just like out on the floor. No, exactly. It was kind of weird. But also, it's, if like, there if there were a bread slicer like that, it's designed to slice bread, not yeah. meat or bones. So, yeah. but anyway, yes, we're gonna suspend exactly. disbelief for a moment. Yeah. You would like push the the loaf of bread horizontally through it to cut the slices. Yeah, it would um, be weird. Yeah. And so, so this is when poor Kate, sassy girl, meets mm-hmm. her end because she is put headfirst through the bread slicer. And oh, yeah. exactly, like they show it and she comes out the other end and her head's sliced up. And I was like, I'm pretty sure if that were to hit bone, it would jam it up, right? Yeah. So I don't yeah, know that absolutely. she would come through it. But it slices are like cake. Also, yeah, I was like, like it, she did look a little bit like cake. That'd be a great cake idea for fans of this movie. <laughs> anyway. I was surprised she died. I was really surprised she actually died. I don't know why. Like, there's lots of death in this movie. I thought they were all going to make it. Yeah. But they don't all make they it because, do not. because Simon, Simon. Simon also, also dies. Simon, how does he die again, though? I think I blocked it out. Uh, the girly girl? The singing girl? Does she get him? R- Ricky says yeah. it was the axe, but. He got the axe. Did he? I don't, I don't remember. remember. He approaches Ruby. No, Josh is being chased by the axe guy. I want to. I don't remember exactly, but I feel like because <laughs> Simon has a weird connection with Ruby because he thought yeah. she was hot. Right? Yeah. I feel like she'd be the one to kill him. Did she get oh, him? Oh, man. No, I'm so watching quick, it again because I don't quick, remember. Quick fun side note. Remember how we said that Sam, uh, uh, Kate looked like cake after going through the bread slicer? She's got cake on her face. Right before she goes through the bread slicer, she has her face smashed into a cake. Oh, he did get an axe to the head. Oh, okay. Oh, axe to the yeah. Head. Yep. Yep. Wait, so who put Kate through the bread slicer? Skull face. Skull. Okay. Yeah. And I honestly thought that it was going to like end right as like her, like maybe her like head starts getting cut. Mm-hmm. But like, my question is why is she holding his hand and not bracing herself against the top of the. the, the anyway, okay, it's fine. She's dead. I shouldn't yell at her. <laughs> Kate, I'm so sorry. I really liked you. But she was probably like, whatever. This is a bread slicer. There's no way it'll go through my head. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So so Simon's fleeing. They him and it and is Josh, like on the open floor, which seems really bizarre. They yeah. see Kate. They see Kate being dead, and then Simon gets axed in his yeah. stun. Josh watches yeah. him take an axe to the back of the skull. Yep, or to the side. Josh starts fleeing. Like command. And then is this the scariest part of the movie for you guys? Because then we're like, oh my god, Josh is Josh. the next Josh most tangential Josh, character. Yep. yep. <laughs> which for some reason they're all ignoring Sam. Like, I, anyway, whatever. So yeah. I'm sorry, I shouldn't throw Sam to the wolves. I just love Josh so much. Maybe their like rate, their murder rage just like goes through different levels at different mm-hmm. times. So yeah. when the blood was streaked across the floor, they were like, "Sam's right there. I'm gonna go straight for Sam." But in this instance, they didn't quite know where she was, so they were exactly. just like, I'm "Her just- blood was on the inside." Yes, and they had her blood on the outside. 
Right. right. So at this point, they're just like, I'm just going to kill everything till I find this girl. Maybe? They didn't, didn't even still have it on their clothes, right? They changed oh, they, by this point. At this point, though, no, did they, they purposely put some on themselves? That was before. But I think, did they not, oh, did they not do it at this point to keep the killers away from Sam and Dina? Oh, maybe. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. Oh, I think okay. they did each put a little bit on themselves. Mm-hmm. They did, they painted themselves with blood, and that's what I made yes. the comment about. She's been losing a lot of blood. Right, <laughs> right. So, so they drown her, she drowns. Dina's yeah. holding her head underwater. This might be the most like very disturbing. Yeah, very disturbing. She's, yeah. she's drowning is horrific. But, but no, this is preteens. A, but and even though this was like their emergency idea, like mm-hmm. honestly, I feel like I know how to. I, well, <laughs> I'm not saying that if somebody drowned around me, I would be able to bring them back to life. But yeah. I would know what to do. The drug yeah. thing seems way more risky. Yeah, it does. Also, <laughs> when they take her out of the lobster tank, because the lobster tank they drank her in, which by yeah. the way only had one lobster in it, and they set the lobster free for anybody. And it was worried. free. It was free. Um, <laughs> but so they take her out of the tank. I'm and, sure it lived a long, happy life. <laughs> Dina starts stabbing her in the sternum, which by the way isn't possible. But stabbing her in the sternum. And that too. Like, I was like, oh, that wouldn't work. Like nope. nine hundred epipens. Like she's gonna, she's gonna overload oh, yeah. her. She's gonna kill her. I also her. thought that too. I'm like, okay, you don't, you, you could just, it's just kind of one and done. And also, you drowned her. An epipen yeah, is not gonna make her. No, work? no, no, it's no, it's not. So I'm like, well, I, Ricky was watching something. I was yelling at the screen. I was like, don't hit me, R. Don't hit me, R. Push it, Josh. So then she finally does, and lo and behold, she does yeah. chest compressions and she does air, uh, breaths. Then Sam comes back. Yeah. Sam comes back. The killers do not come back, though. Everything's fine. Everything's normal. Yep. Yep. Because the Sam end. died. <laughs> yep. Or is it? It's not the end. It's not. <laughs> it's not the end, guys. There's two more so movies. We think everything's okay. Oh, actually, and also did, like, was... I, I don't actually remember this, but I feel like it was probably filmed this way, where, like, right before Sam technically was dead... Mm-hmm. Was Josh about to get murdered? Because yes. I just remember I was very worried about Josh. Yes, I was. I was so worried. I was like, "This is gonna be. They're gonna be too late. It's gonna. He's gonna get murdered. Yeah. And like the the guy's gonna have like the axe above his head. It's gonna be swinging down. The dude's gonna disappear, and his axe is still gonna come down. I don't know. I was so worried. But yeah. like, I'm Josh super sad it. about Kate and Simon. Though. I really liked them. They were good kids, and like, you know, not that bad kids deserve to die. You know, I'm not. That's not. They were kind on. of bad kids. You know, they were kind but, of yeah, bad. I guess. But like, you know, that so everything's done. They go to the police station. It's Sheriff Goody again. They're talking to Sheriff Goody and like they they hide the fact that what happened happened. They're like, oh, you know, um, we don't know what's going on. We hid the whole time. You know, I, I fell down. I fell on some glass and that's why I have this wound. I fell on some glass. I fell on some glass. They blame it on the druggies. Yeah, yeah. they said they went like nuts. Because mm-hmm. like you know another well shady they kind of begrudgingly that. do that but they do do that like I feel mm-hmm. like Sheriff Goody says something like so if you if you this is the information you're giving me then that whole mess was caused by your friends is that the story you want to go with you might and, as well <laughs> yeah exactly I mean they're dead so <laughs> yeah which um so then you know they're done the police station Sam's mom comes to pick her up and like. She's like, no, get away from Dina, because her and Dina are, like, holding hands. It's like, how, you're going to ruin my daughter's life. How dare you? And then Dina's like, I'll see you tomorrow. And Sam's like, no, tonight. And she, like, leaves her mom's side and goes and kisses her in front of her mom, which, like, me, is like, yeah, hell yeah. But also, I'm like, it's the 90s. Like, her mom could absolutely send her to conversion camp or, like, conversion <laughs> therapy. Like, yeah. I, was, I was, like, worried from, like, purely a real life. Uh, they're not going to do that this movie. I know. And this I is got, a movie for Gen Zers. I got yeah. the impression that some of it was not just because she's a girl, but also because of her family and, like, oh, where yeah. she's from and stuff. Oh, yeah. It wasn't sure. all I think, because they I think were that, gay. And, again, because this movie is targeted for people who are young now and it's, like, a different world, mm-hmm. they wouldn't necessarily... Like, we understand that, like, (laughs) two girls dating was a totally different situation in the 90s, Mm -hmm. but I think maybe the target audience wouldn't necessarily get that. So while we can read between the lines and kind of assume that much, I think that it was mostly, or maybe not even mostly, but I think, yeah, some of what the mom was implying was that, like, Dina was, like, no good. Like, she's just not good enough for her daughter. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, So then we get to, you know, later that night... 
um, the news about the the druggies and their violence. We've got Sam, we've got Dina and they're, you know, they're at Dina's house and they're like, you know, in bed and just kind of like holding each other, like recovering, listening mm-hmm. to music. Josh is downstairs, like listening, you know, on his computer. Um, Talking to his mysterious friend. Yeah, who I who thought we was still don't back. know. Yeah. We still don't know who it is. Queen of Air and Darkness. Maybe by the third movie. Maybe. Well, maybe by the second movie. Maybe by the second movie. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, that was my big, that, yeah. that for me, that was the main thing that I was like, well, I have, to, well, I was gonna anyway, but like, I was like, I gotta see the next movie because I want to know who his online friend is. Well, here's the thing is that part of me was like, oh, so each of these movies are just like independent. We're just going to keep going back in time and then seeing these like, you know, snapshots of a murderer. We're going to know that it's going to end a certain way. Like, that's not really that thrilling to me. Like, I, I mean, not to sound too ungrateful, I would have watched them and loved them, but I was like, okay, we'll kind of already know where this is going. But, no, that's not what happens. We have a last-minute twist in this episode. Like, not Mm -hmm. even last minute. Like, last 15 minutes. So, Sam and Dina are, uh, you know... Because, you guys, I was scared because I said one of the great things about the book is that... Or all of the books... Is that they have twists, and yeah, usually it's not just one twist. It's yeah, just tw- twisty twist, twist uh, left and right type of thing. Yeah, yeah. I th- I thought yeah, I thought we were just gonna wrap it up, and this that would be the end of this movie, and you know, kind of lowers the stakes because like, oh, okay, so we go back, and it's gonna be the seventies, and none of these people are gonna live except for this person. What, what do I care? Mm-hmm. Like, I already know. Okay, that's I'm sure it would be fun to watch, but I'm already gonna know the outcome. So it's like okay, but you and know, then, like, you 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 know that couldn't have been it because like. Hmm. If we start with the most recent time frame and then yeah. don't go back to it again, then there's mm-hmm. not really a conclusion for this town. I agree, Unless, but I, yeah. I, yeah, I just didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know any better. I didn't realize yeah. I but incorrectly. But anyway, the twist. Going. So the What's last the bit, oh, it was so good. It, I mean, it was bad, yeah. but it was good. Uh, it shocked me. I was shocked, I was shocked. too. So Sam and Dina in bed, holding each other, recovering, listening to music. I think it's the Pixies. Um, they hear the doorbell mm-hmm. ring, uh, and Dina's like, "Who's here? It's late." And she goes downstairs, and there's nobody at the door. And she's like, "Oh, oh no, oh gosh!" And she turns around. It's Josh. He's like, "Oh, I ordered a pizza. It's pizza guy. Pizza's on the. If you want some pizza." And she's like, "Oh, you answered the door. Good for yeah. you. Like, good <laughs> she's job, so buddy. proud of him. Yeah. You ordered pizza, and good you talked to you, op- and you ordered. <laughs> you open. Oh, so nice. Yeah. Okay, good job, buddy." <laughs> Uh, and then upstairs, we see Sam alone, and we hear that whisper. Mm-hmm. Somebody saying Sam's name in her ear. So, just like with Ryan in the very beginning, we have an unnamed, unbodied voice. Disembodied, there's the word. Voice. Unbodied. <laughs> unbodied. Unbodied and rebodied. Um, and she kind of gets this, like, glazed look on her face. And Dina's downstairs eating pizza i don't know and sam co- oh no dina's on the phone and she gets oh. a call back oh she gets the call back from c berman somebody talk yeah. to c berman well she ta- she she talks to her and it and c berman is basically like uh well dina's like so how did like oh we figured it out uh you died and then when you came back to life you stopped being cursed so it was all good no. and c Ber- she's no she's like no nope. no <laughs> No. <laughs> Dina says it's over now, and C. Berman says no, it's never over. She yep. makes the rules. Yeah, the witch. So then, then we see some old timey shrine with some chanting dude. Oh, and a... that's right. I yeah. forgot about that. We have all these stones with all these names on them: Harry Rooker, Ruby uh-huh. Lane. A uh, Harry yep. Rooker might be the camp. Oh wait, no, because he was after ryan to- for- oh, maybe because it was yeah um and Ryan's then small kid yeah yep and then samantha fraser yeah so the witch picks and we see dina on the phone sam's behind her and sam stabs her yeah stabs straight her up stabs stomach. her yep i was like damn she stabbed there's also, her there's also like- a fly there's a fly around sam which i only just realized in the beginning when ryan heard the voice he also had a fly in his neck Oh, yeah. 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 Interesting. So Josh is downstairs on the computer. He's got his metal music blasting. He's talking to uh, the Queen of Air and Darkness. And she's like, oh, those two druggy kids did it. And he's like, no, listen, they were my friends and they were good kids. Hmm. Let me tell you about them. And so we're like, oh, God, Sam's going to get Josh. Oh, no. Oh, no. (laughs) Um, Oh, it's not Sir Silence. It's Horrible Silence. But the S is an eight. Okay. Then uh, a hand comes and grabs Josh's shoulder. It's not Sam. It's Dina. 
she's bleeding. And she's like, we have a problem. And she tied up uh, Sam. So Sam's under control for now. Sam's tied up with a phone cord, which, thank goodness, it was the 80s. I mean, 90s. <laughs> thank goodness. Um, I was excited about this because even, like, as that twist happened, I was like, oh, damn, she got Dina. Like, that, and, and then I was like, that's how this is gonna end. Mm -hmm. But then it turned out that, like, that, no, we're gonna get more of this particular storyline. Because yeah, I, yes. This yes. has to resolve somehow. Yes, so um, excited. Yeah. So so now we know that the next episode, the next like movies, like the second one, we're going to see the seventies, um, but it's going to help us figure out the the, the present, the the nineties, and then we'll go all the way back in the third movie to the sixteen hundreds and get that. And I hope we still stay connected to these three kids the entire time and Sheriff Goody mm -hmm. and find out. So the end of this episode, they go to uh, what's this? they go to see Berman's house. I think the trailer yeah. for the next one. Yeah, there's we, like they, a sneak preview. Yes. Oh yeah. I I watched the seventies camp, preview, but I but I didn't watch the whole thing because I want to go in as blind as I did to the first one. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, they go and see C. Berman. They talk to her, and C. Berman tells them about camp. I'm excited because I hear yeah. good things about the next one. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know it was out until we started recording, so I'm gonna. I don't know if I have time to watch it, but I want to go watch it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very, one. very excited because the fact that this was a trilogy and this mm -hmm. the first one that's like establishing a lot of the lore was so fun to watch. Like, I feel like the second one's got is going to be just as good or better. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, also, so, a great '70s soundtrack, according to the the trailer. Oh, I'm sure it will be. I can't wait. I love '70s music too. I love '90s. I love '70s, and I love '1600s music. Just kidding. So, also the this movie was very supernatural focused, which was a different yes. from the book. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The book. I mean, yeah. So, me only knowing the Fear Street books that we've read so far, it's kind of that. I feel like they don't focus on supernatural stuff no. a lot. Mm -mm. If at all. Um, so yeah, it was like, it's a fun movie. Yeah, I had a, I had a blast, guys. I was, I was enjoying it the entire time I was watching it. Loved the music. Loved the quality of the actual, like, movie itself. Loved the characters. Like, I don't, it was just, it was a blast. I am mm -hmm. so glad they made it, and I'm so glad I got to watch it. <laughs> yeah. But like, like I said, there was... Uh, some part in the middle there where it slowed down. Dra yeah, quite slowed a, bit. a little bit. It yeah. did slow down, but you and know, I, I understand. Lost, I, you know, I got a little distracted or whatever. But then, like when the killing picked up again, it was like, oh, like this is awesome. This is well done. This yeah, is cool. The yeah. grocery store scene was super fun. I loved how it was lit. Yeah, and, and how it looked and how it played out. That was great. And it was like, oh, this is like the speed I needed the whole time. Mm -hmm. Also, shout out to uh the like production team or whatever or i guess just whoever okayed doing major scenes in a grocery store because they had to make 90s packaging for all of the items that are in yeah. the store like that's yep. a lot of work so i just want to yep. give props to whoever did that <laughs> there was a great like, deal of work that went into this and it's yeah it's it was really parent. good yeah mm -hmm. like i think they um they they filmed it with a it, it feels like they filmed it with a it didn't have that like crisp feel of like hd 4K. I don't know. Maybe I'm imagining that, but it felt a little like maybe it was just a combination of like lighting and like. Yeah, I think it's how it's, how it's lit. Yeah, it just um, it felt nostalgic. I don't think it felt 90s enough. Yeah, yeah. I, I without the language, like the actual like slang, because they're all teens. They should be talking like, you yeah, know, this could have happened now. Like, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Minus the fact that there's no cell phones. Yeah, that is one thing that I think is sort of uh, unavoidable, uh, or unavoidable even. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, they have to cast kids that are young now. Um, and I wouldn't think that, like, we talked that differently in the 90s, but you can kind of feel it. Like, yeah. you know? Well, I worry that having kids that are, you know, kids now, teens mm -hmm. now, uh, try to... Um, emulate the speech and mannerisms of like 90s kids in the 90s it might seem a little hokey yeah so yeah, like, I'd rather, like, yeah i'd rather this than 
Yeah, like in the beginning when I was like, you know, da bomb. Like if somebody said that, no one even the they didn't even say cool or no one had a Bart Simpson shirt on. Like, oh man, there should have been a Bart man. Simpson shirt. I mean, right? the royalties alone of that, guys. Come on. Also, also we. <laughs> I mean, I did praise the soundtrack, but I didn't hear the Macarena once. Oh, although it's 1994, no. yeah. so it would have to be. Yeah, but none of uh, none of the songs were like year specific. Yeah, they were like oh, they the, weren't. They were 90s okay. feeling, you know. But yeah, exactly. It was very specific 90s songs, and even though I enjoy them, they are not songs that I necessarily would have pegged as like iconic 90s songs. Right. Yes, that's true. I, mean, I don't know. Some of them I maybe, needed more 90s. But... More 90s is what I needed. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like I mean, they had Bush. There was Portishead. Garbage. Cypress Hill. Cypress Hill was a good one. That's yeah, a good one. Oh, yeah. To have in there. Nine Inch Nails. There's a Snoop Dogg song in there. I mean, I was. Oh, like there was 10. a White Zombie song. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. um, but yeah. Um, I didn't get like that their outfits were 90s at all. No, no, me either. Other than the deal you look in the very beginning, it. Yeah. Well, it didn't even strike me as 90s. It struck me more as like the kids kids now who dress like 90s style. Does that make uh, sense? Okay. Yeah. Yep. We should do ratings. Oh yeah, oh, ratings. Yeah. I was like, what are we forgetting? <sighs> <laughs> okay. Uh all right. I'm gonna give this film five out of five lost and found sweaters. Oh, that's good. I enjoyed it. Oh gosh, I gotta think about a thing. Actually, you know what? I want to leave some room for improvement for the future. So I'm going to give it 4.8 out of 5. Wow. I like your, your decimal system. I might have to use that because I feel Thank like you. a solid number <laughs> isn't enough. Yeah, sometimes you got to get more granular with it, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to do bread slicers. It's going to have to oh, be 3.6 out of 5 bread Whoa. slicers. Nice, nice. Six. Okay. Three, yeah, 3.6. I have the feeling the next one, if they homage 70s movies at all, is going to make Stacy very happy. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. But maybe not. Um, I, mean, I mean, I mean, it's it's a 70s horror thing taking place at a summer camp out with an, an axe murderer. murderer. Yeah. So come on right there. It's going to be um, great. I, yeah. I hope. I mean, because that guy was way so cooler. But then yes, again, he like, was he was the best out of them. I think. I mean, he I love the... Scream. Scream is an amazing movie. It is iconic. Yes. It is yeah. '90s to the core. Yeah. And this movie was not that. It no, was not that. No. no. Lots of uh, bisexual lighting, though. I can appreciate I give that. my rating? Can I give my rating? Yeah, yeah. Of course. I'm give my rating. Uh, I'm gonna do. I for I. I love the music. I love the story. I love the characters. I am disappointed by the lack of '90s like fashion 90s slang uh and there were a couple of points where i was like wait this doesn't make no sense but i still had a fantastic time so i'm gonna do uh, a 4.6 out of five freed lobsters i hope he lived i hope he lived too i mean i don't did. know i don't know where shady side is but i hope it's near some sea salt water ohio <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he's going to make it to the ocean. <laughs> oh. oh, dear. Nice. Okay, yeah. So any final words before I wrap things up? I'm just um, super excited for the next the next installment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to find out who that chat room buddy is. Oh, I have to find that out. <laughs> who do what you think it, it is? I think I it's Sarah Fear. No. <laughs> oh, that would be cool. I think it's um, Sarah Fear. Uh... I think, yeah, I have no idea. It couldn't be anyone who we've already met, because they're all dead. Uh, <laughs> as far as other teens go. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but I hope I hope maybe, maybe a romance will flourish between Josh and his online friend. Because he, he thought he had a crush on Kate, but she was just, like, older and cooler and pretty. Keep yeah. assuming it's an adult he's talking to. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is, it is a 90s chat room, so maybe it is. Okay. Time to wrap things up. Okay. You can find us on social media at Goosebumps Pod. Tell us what you thought of the movie and what your uh, guesses are for the next two. And we will see you next time. Stay spooky. Goodbye. Goodbye. Stay bitching. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Cowabunga, dude. There you go. <laughs> Gnarly. That's 90s appropriate. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Ha, <laughs>